With the racist and punitive Northern Territory intervention, sorry, I mean stronger futures, finally set to lapse after its 15 year path of destruction, this Howard led government policy that has decimated Aboriginal communities since 2007 is finally coming to an end. You get it? Yeah, I got it. But what is the NT intervention? Straight up, it's racist. With no warning and no consultation, the federal government took unprecedented action to seize control of the daily lives of Aboriginal people living in remote communities. Since its inception, the government has spent over a billion dollars to maintain it. To kick this off, then Prime Minister John Howard had to suspend six key pieces of legislation. So how did we get here? Let's go back to where it all began. In 2006, ABC's Late Line program played a huge role in stoking the lies about Aboriginal communities in the NT when this episode was aired. Everybody in those communities knows who runs the pedophile rings. They know who brings in the petrol. They, knows who sell, they know who sells the gunja. They need to be taken out of the community and dealt, dealt with. In 2006, the ABC's Late Line program aired an interview with an anonymous man said to be a youth worker who lived in Mutajulu. This man was Gregory Andrews. He was not a youth worker and did not live in the community. This sensationalist propaganda led to the government report released in 2007, sparking 15 years of paternalistic government control. In April, this report investigated public allegations of abuse on Aboriginal children. Like countless reports before it, the authors pointed to a range of complex issues, spanning from poverty, health, housing, and employment. Importantly, the report championed the need for community-driven solutions. But two weeks later, the Australian Defence Force was on the ground, in uniform, in remote communities. Shortly after, John Howard and Mel Bruff implemented the NT Emergency Response Act, chillingly introducing five pieces of legislation overnight, just like that. And Mr Bruff and I have called this news conference to announce um, a number of major measures. This initiated a laundry list of truly revolting measures of coercion that would be completely unimaginable in non-Aboriginal communities. From the compulsory acquisition of 65 communities held under provisions of the Native Title Act, invasive compulsory health checks on children, quarantining of 50% of welfare payments of people living in remote communities, the wholesale banning of alcohol and pornography and an increased police presence. The restriction and repression of Aboriginal people in the NT was as swift as it was brutal. Then, in November 2007, Howard lost the election and his seat. But this didn't change a thing. Once in government, both the Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard Labor governments continued all key aspects of the intervention. After being in effect for a year, ALP Minister Jenny Macklin introduced new measures that suspended income support payments to all parents whose children didn't attend school regularly. But this didn't come with any support for parents to do that, or anything to make schools culturally safe. In the same year, the Racist Basics card was introduced to manage the income of all Aboriginal people on Centrelink in the NT beginning 14 years of humiliating, dehumanising and privatised control over how people spend their money and live their lives. Again, something completely unimaginable in non-Aboriginal communities. In 2010, the UN Special Rapporteur on Indigenous Rights, James Arnai, released his final report strongly criticising the intervention for its breaches of international human rights obligations, racially discriminatory policies and failure to respect the rights of Indigenous peoples to self-determination. On November 23, 2011, despite five years of protest and fierce criticism, both nationally and internationally, Minister Jenny Macklin introduced the Stronger Futures legislation, 
It was a thinly veiled 10 year extension of the intervention under a shiny new name. Most people stopped hearing about the Northern Territory intervention after this rebranding, slowly forgetting all about it. Welfare quarantining, school attendance measures and penalties for alcohol and pornography use were all expanded. This was despite a lack of evidence that these measures were effective. All of this leads us to now in 2022, fast approaching the expiration of the Northern Territory intervention. After 15 years, countless evaluations have been damning. More Aboriginal children are being removed from family and culture than ever before. The NT intervention saw a massive injection in child protection funding. And instead of focusing those resources on supporting families and communities, the rate of child removal has increased more than threefold. The punitive measures have not increased school attendance and instead saw a massive spike in youth suicide and self-harm. The damage caused by the punitive nature of measures such as welfare quarantining, stigmatisation of community residents through links to dysfunction and child abuse, loss of autonomy and imposition of culturally inappropriate policies is far and wide reaching. But the time has come for First Nations communities of the Northern Territory to be self-empowered after 15 years of surviving the most discriminatory form of government control designed to externally manage the lives of Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory. The NT intervention is planned to end on the 29th of June, 2022. Now is a critical time to call on the government to listen to the voices of elders and community leaders who have the solutions and know what's best for their communities to be self-determined. It's time for the government to invest in local schools and programs that help parents, teachers and children foster two-way learning. Create pathways and opportunities for young people to learn new skills and partake in professional development programs in our Aboriginal organisations. Build women's shelters, aged care facilities and high schools in remote communities. Build more houses, not house extensions, that cater for overcrowding issues. Lower the food prices in shops and fix the roads that cause extensive car damage. You know, the basics. Get it done.